Hey guys, uh, this is part 2 of my series on Yamato's Fire Control. Uh, it was supposed to be out a lot earlier, but every time I went to record um, a video, I would find a new piece of evidence that I had to, I had to include. This video is, is about the actual fire control system on board Yamato, the Type 98 Shadiki Bomb. Uh, basically, it was a table with a bunch of gears and cards hidden underneath, and, and as you turn the dials, uh, the fire solution would change. With a maximum range of 50 kilometers, it outranged even Yamato's primary armament. In addition, you could, could find the solution for our target moving at up to 40 knots, while the firing ship was moving, moving at up to 35 knots. Now, this wasn't a problem because Yamato couldn't only move at about 28 knots, and the only ships that could move beyond 40 knots were mostly just our patrol boats. <laughs> Of course, it compensated for other variables like the wind speed, uh, humidity, the corrosion on the, on the gun barrels, and a bunch of other, um, and of course, other variables. The only time this system ever came into use was during the Battle of Samar in 1944. Most people believe that Yamato scored maybe one or two hits against the carrier USS Gambier Bay. However, that's false. Actually, she scored around, um, Around 4 hits, plus another 3 probable ones. The first hit was against the escort carrier USS White Plains. There's actually a picture of this taken by the nearby carrier, I believe, USS Kalanen Bay. It was a 6 round salvo at the in the first few minutes of the battle. Now, because the log of the USS White Plains explicitly states that it was a 6 round salvo of major caliber AP rounds, we can be sure that it was Yamato. No other uh, ship in the Imperial Japanese fleet at that time could fire a 6 round forward salvo, because all the ships were moving forward at that time. Now, it wasn't a hit as in the shell impacted the ship above the waterline. However, it did blow up under the ship and it did disable some uh, systems and some radar for a short period of time and damage the hull a little bit. That counts as a hit. One army could fire is sits around forward salvo, but her guns weren't major caliber guns, so it had to have, it had to have been Yamato. The next three rounds were against the destroyer USS Johnson at around 7.30. Well, it was actually six hits. It was three from our main battery and three from our secondary battery of two hundred of one hundred fifty-five millimeter six point one inch guns. But we're only counting the main battery hits. Now, while most people give credit for these hits on the battleship Cornwall, she couldn't have fired these shots. Well, for one, she was in a rain squall. For two, her rangefinders had been damaged by strafing uh, U.S. fighter aircraft, so she wouldn't have been able to get the range on Johnson. Now, the reason most people give credit for these hits on Con to Cornwall is because the log of the ship says that it believes it was hit by 14 inch shells. However, also know that the Johnston misidentified the battleship portion of the Japanese center force as being comprised of two Kongos and two Ise class battleships. Now, because these classes had been around since before World War I, the officers on board Johnston thought that the biggest guns on board the Japanese center force ships were 356mm 14 inch guns, which they weren't. Now, she would have sunk if it weren't for the fact that the Japanese battleship shells had long fuses. They were designed to penetrate deep into armored targets and explode in the most vital parts of the ship, like the machinery spaces and the magazines. And for this reason, they would generally just pass straight through uh, thinly armored targets like destroyers, destroyer escorts, and escort carriers. That's one of the reasons why uh, US losses were so low at Samar. Since Japanese heavy units were almost exclusively firing full salvos at Samar, Yamato is by far the most likely candidate for that three round major caliber AP salvo that hit Johnson. The first of the three probable hits was on the uh, destroyer USS uh, Howell. The after action report of the USS Howell mentions being hit by an 8 inch or 16 inch shell. Now, the Howell uh, misidentified the battleship force as being comprised of two Kondo class and two Yamato class battleships. Because the true size of Yamato's main guns had been concealed, the US Navy thought that the guns on board Yamato were 41cm 16-inch guns, and not the actual 46cm uh, guns that they were. Although that shell could have come from Naruto, it was more likely to be Yamato because Yamato was in front of Naruto when they were moving toward the uh, Taffy 3. Finally, the last two hits of the probable 3 were on the USS Gambier Bay, an escort carrier. Starting at around 8.10, USS Gambier Bay was hit and sunk by a bunch of shells of both major and medium calibers. Now, although Yamato and Nanato had turned away from the battle and were fleeing because they were being chased by a pair of, um, of torpedoes fired by USS Her Herman, or Herman, she was still capable of hitting USS Gambier Bay with her aft 
46cm or 18 inch guns. Yamato's log mentions two confirmed hits on a US aircraft carrier. During the Battle of Samar, she fired around about 108 major caliber shells. I assign the value of 0.5 hits for every probable hit. That gives Yamato a hit percentage of around about 5.5%. So, as you can see, Yamato's firing during the Battle of Samar wasn't actually that poor. So, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.